Here we are again. What's up, guys? It's finishing up here. The, uh, <clears throat> I got spearmint going. Uh, some tomato plants have come up. Uh, apparently, it's time for a time because that's working. Some lemon basil. Those are weird. The the seeds they kind of they get some water in them and then they they turn like a gray color on the outside right before they pop. So I'm pretty confident those are gonna go. Um, got some Swiss chard going. Uh, flax. Never grew flax before. Should be interesting. And uh, like I said, tomatoes. We need tomatoes um, because uh, my intentions are. Pizza. Pizza's good. Um, you can have pizza for breakfast if you want. If the pizza's good enough, man, you can just leave that stuff laying around and it'll be perfectly fine to eat many, many days later. Uh, what I would recommend is uh, instead of spending a lot of money and maybe some other place to make a pizza for you, uh, save one of those pizza boxes. Because uh, what you can do is you put your pizza in there, and then you uh, you set it on the porch, and then you go to your back door, and you, you ring the doorbell, and then you go back to the front, and then you look out there, and like, somebody left you a present. Uh, move fast, though, because once that smell hits the air, other people might be showing up to take it. So, But that'd be okay, too. Um, anyway, let's play some pinball. And, uh, and then I'm going to prepare to uh, maybe look outside, take a look at the property and see. Uh, I might mow the grass today. Eh, you know. I ain't heard nothing, right? Um, lots of weeds, dandelions growing and stuff. Gives the bees something to eat. Um, I don't dump chemicals in my lawn. Uh, so... Uh, I mean, uh, anything, I, anything that grows in there, I can actually, you know, if I wanted to grab those dandelion leaves, make a salad. Hey, that works. Um, I should try and grow some dandelions inside. That'd be kind of fun. Hmm. All right, let's go. Boston used to be a, a pretty decent place, and I guess it's, uh, it's going to run down these days, they say.
Here it goes. <laughs> yes, sir. Phoenix. Standing on the corner of Winslow, Arizona, such a fine sight to see. It's a girl, my lord, with a flatbed Ford, trying to sell some seeds onto me. Come on, baby, we'll make potatoes and gravy. <laughs> Again, she's a determined that sometimes, you know. Extra ball. There goes that mystery rider again. This time, pass hurry up. Oregon. One twenty-six. That's a very important number to me. One twenty-six is when man was made. January twenty-six is when the Marine Corps made me as a man. They when I joined the Marine Corps <clears throat> back in 1983. And a short time afterwards, uh, some goofball in a truck decided to take out his revenge against uh, somebody and blew up the barracks at the end of the runway. And then, uh, yeah. And then what happened was precursor to war <clears throat> and I had already joined I was on delayed entry and uh, had to listen to my family screaming and crying about you know yeah, they were all worried about me you know what I was worried about telling the truth I didn't want to I didn't want to swear an oath on a Bible and then turn around and, you know. Back out of it in fear and... <clears throat> I don't know. I didn't have fear in my heart at that time in my life. <laughs> now I do. Now I fear for you. I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning for you. <laughs> I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning for you. What are the lyrics to that song? Would you guys want me to like just a cappella? Pick some random lyrics of songs and just start uh, singing. We're for Man, I heard like some kind of secret sheet music that was found from 
like Leonardo da Vinci, man. I mean, it was beautiful. Beautiful. It's like, man, the guy did everything. You know, that would be an accomplishment in and of itself, to, like make it all the way to Milwaukee on a shingle ball. I'll go for that. Red light multi ball. Seventy-five percent of all the targets I need to knock down for the next city. Who's complaining? Let's blow some red lights. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, I like it when he says, "Shoot the patch," because all I think of is women's parts. <laughs> that patch. Shoot the patch. And then what do they talk about? The place where I probably have a son. Denver. <laughs> Hi, Pan. If you're watching. You should really tell the old man that he's got a boy. It would be appreciated. Or tell the boy that he's got an old man. Who knows? That was a nice shot. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> yeah, life's been exciting for me, guys. It really has. I've done everything. I've lived on the streets. I've made a six-figure income and everything in between. Thing is, is I've learned from my life, and I think that the best thing to do with the rest of it that's left is well, try and expose our Lord. Wait a minute. Is that nakedness? <laughs> is that nakedness Sturgis? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. Sturgis is definitely <laughs> nakedness. <laughs> Extra ball. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, the only person you should ever judge is yourself. Hey, teacher, leave those trees alone. Yeah, the trees will figure it out on their own. That's why they have good and evil on them. And in them. 
but that's how we were made. We were made in God's image with the ability to do both. However, it should be noted that God makes and forms peace and light. However, evil is something that is actually created. If you can imagine that. Wait a minute. Man was created. Is man evil? Of course he is. But wait. There's a second part of the story. Man was also formed. Oh. From the dust of the ground. What? Yeah. You didn't hear about that? What do you mean the dust of the ground? From the dirt, man. The dirt. You know, the shit that you spread around all over the place and causes problems, <laughs> causes things to grow. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> ah. However, if you work the soil, like you're supposed to, like a, like a good agent, guess what happens? Well, things turn out differently. God is kind. And as kind as you are. Oh, <clears throat> oh wow. Well, that wasn't too kind. That wasn't the kind of ending I was hoping for. <clears throat> But yeah, you're not supposed to pull up the weeds, man. Don't trash the place. Don't go in like you think you know what you're doing. Right? Route 50, that's a jubilee. <laughs> um, don't go in like you, you know, like you got it all figured out and trashing somebody that's still figuring it out. They'll figure it out. They will. What you sow is what you reap. Don't bag on somebody for, you know, sowing bad shit. They will figure it out. You can help them to be a better gardener, then do that. Help them out. Help them see what they should grow. <laughs> and then good will grow. Uh, and in the case where they don't, 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 don't attack them, man. Because what you're doing is you're watering the thing. You're dumping living water on something that should die. Remember when Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead? There is a reason for that. You leave what's behind you behind you. Get behind me, Satan. Uh, we'll build a church out of you later. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think we need another one. It's the time of the season for a beer run. What's your name? Who's your daddy? Is he big and rich like me? Has he taken the time to show? you what it is you need to love mm -hmm. hey that's a uh, kind of interesting and you're gonna find that when you listen to lyrics of songs you're gonna find out that mysteriously if you look at it in the right way without being all you know oh that's about sex and that you're gonna go wow I take that bad music, that musical flavoring that goes with it, and, and erase the context. Close my eyes instead of seeing evil, right? Close my eyes. 
you're going to find out that God is all over this place. Everywhere. Everywhere. And it's going to give you the creeps. Because you're going to go, oh my God, he's been here all the time. <laughs> yes. Our God loves us. And he doesn't abandon us. Ever. He'll find a way to get to us, and, you know, you shouldn't trash people for uh, the bad way that they've taken, right? Like, there are two ways <laughs> to know God. <laughs> you can do it the right way through wisdom and, and so on. And people go, oh, no, Jesus is the way. And it's like, yeah, Jesus is the word. The word of God. Duh! <laughs> so guess what happens? That's how you find out about God. <laughs> His word will never die. It will never, ever, ever go away. What? What is this? Uh, Microsoft recommended browser settings. Get the latest news. and snoop. Yeah, whatever. I don't care about any of crap, the latest news. There is no latest news. It's all the same junk. <laughs> People killing each other. People fighting for no good reason. Why in the hell would I want to see the news? Uh, whoever you are. Oh, look. Oh, it's a turtle. My wife is a turtle. <laughs> you, what? Yeah, perfect. Look at look at Tiger's face. <laughs> what? No, no, she is. Pink Floyd, The Wall. What? Oh, that's great, because that's when I joined the Marine Corps. That was the night before I went to boot camp. My friends took me to go see Pink Floyd, The Wall, and you know what the very first scene was? Destruction. Oh, these bastards are looking at my cookies for sure. They just threw a they just threw a motorcycle tire up there that I need. Twelve obvious signs of what? I, I couldn't tell anything because the chick was just too smoking seductively looking at you. So come on, hurry up, get back to the beginning. What do we pick? Do we pick Pink Floyd or the or do we buy a motorcycle tire? Or <laughs> uh, now this is really getting fun. I'm sorry, man. Okay. I remember her, so here we go. Coming back through the middle again. Oh, there's Tiger. Oh, what? Trouble with Tiger Woods. Of course, he's always been in trouble. Ah, uh, Pink Floyd the Wall. Boom. Do you remember? Of course I remember. Do you remember the one line in Pink Floyd the Wall spoken by Bob Geldof that wasn't a song lyric? <clears throat> Look it! There it is! And and that was when the song came out, uh, or the album came out, and literally, the night before I went... Okay, so this is the scene. <laughs> I joined the Marine Corps, right? Uh, all hell's broken loose, blowing up Beirut, and, you know, and shitstorm, right? And, and so, like, my friends, to be really nice to me, we're going to take you out to see Pink Floyd The Wall because they knew I love Pink Floyd, right? Uh, my mom introduced me to Pink Floyd because she didn't know what the hell it was. There was a, there was a radio station here called WLS, I believe. Could be mistaken. I think it was WLS. But she won, uh, she won albums. You know, you call in, you could call in and you could win albums, right? <clears throat> uh, that was their thing, you know, get you online. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. You know, promote the record company by giving you their stuff. And so uh, guess what happens? <clears throat> they gave her, <laughs> not kidding, not kidding. <laughs> they gave her some, uh, who knows, like probably Freddie Fender albums and, yeah. Who else was good? Waylon Jennings or 
or uh, who was the other guy? Uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but what happened was is hmm. piece of food. Um, what happened was is they when the record company was promoting their stuff and uh and and like I was almost a signed musician I don't know if you realize or not they had three record companies looking at my band until they kicked me out <laughs> and then they tanked hmm I wonder who the magic part of the band was <clears throat> but anyway um not blowing my own horn it's just a band is a puzzle a group of people uh, to do a specific purpose, no different than Jesus and the disciples. And, um, and our booking agent brought us up and told us that we were going to make it if we did the right thing. And we did, <clears throat> but anyway, so it looked like it was changing back there. I'm see lights flashing over my shoulder. Yes, I can see behind me. Um, anyway, so my mom gets all these albums from this record station, <clears throat> or uh, <laughs> from this radio station, <clears throat> and along with the, they just have like a, it must have been, you know, obviously the radio station didn't care, they're just playing the music, and people are calling in, and the, the record company saying, give them X. Well, they gave my mother all these country albums that she liked because that's why she called in. But they also gave her, <clears throat> of all things, Pink Floyd Animals and Cheech and Chong Big Bamboo. <laughs> and what did she do with it? I don't want these. Give them to the kid. <laughs> so here I am. Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe I was like eight years old. I don't know how old I was. I was really young but gave me Pink Floyd animals and Cheech and Chong. Who is it? It's Dave, man. Open up. I got the stuff with me. Who is it? it, it, it it's Dave, man. Open up. I got the stuff with me. I think the cops saw me come in here. Who is it? It's Dave, man. Will you open up? I got the stuff with me. Who? Dave, man. Open up. Dave? Yeah, Dave, man. Come on, man. Dave's not here. No, man. I'm Dave, man. Hey, come on, man. Open up. I got the stuff with me. I think the cops saw me coming. Who is it? It's Dave. <laughs> yeah, my memory is really good. And <laughs> so, like, and I don't forget anything. If you've ever screwed me over, I remember it. I remember. But do you know what I also know? We only get so much time here. And so, I forgive you. I'm telling you, you record this video. Have it as a testimony. Whoever the hell you are that has ever done wrong to me, I forgive you. So, there. What do you got now? What kind of fight can you start with that? I guess you can't, can you? <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> so, like, Pink Floyd, animals. Weird, dude. And it was where I learned my first scripture. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Sorry. He makes me down to lie. Through pastures green he leadeth me, the silent waters by. With bright knives he releaseth, releaseth my soul. And now it's coming to me, the sword. With bright knives, bright, the bright and shining one, right? The bright morning star. With bright knives he releaseth my soul. He maketh me to hang on hooks in high places. How about Jesus? Mm. He converts me into lamb cutlets. 
for lo, he hath great power and great hunger. Those are two different things. Power and hunger. If you had great power, you'd ignore your hunger. If you're hungry, you're a slave. <laughs> you're of want. You're lacking. Anyway, this just all came to I'm just I'm going over these lyrics now. I've not thought about those lyrics in a lot of years, but like I said, God's everywhere. Let's get back to Pink Floyd and that night. So these guys take me to what's called the midnight showing. They used to play movies at night around midnight, right? Like people are out in bars drinking, having a good time. Hey, why not get them on the roads and driving cars <laughs> and into a movie theater instead where they can sit down for two or three hours and watch some movie, chill out, do something cool besides drinking and maybe you know, learn something or whatever, right? Some different kind of entertainment other than destroying yourself. Um, where the hell's my beer? <clears throat> so anyway. Uh, my friends take me to see this movie. And my destiny... The next day, like, I'm leaving to go into boot camp. War is looming, rumors of war. It all looks terrible. Everybody's, you know, <laughs> families lost their mind. Terrible things happen. Like, I had somebody in my family that was actually, he was a Marine. And uh, <laughs> he told me, this is what a Marine told me. He said, you haven't really sworn in yet. The real one is when you get on before you get on the bus. Right? Like I had already, you know, enlisted ahead of time. And so like I had already raised my hand on a Bible, you know. Uh, I, me, um, agree to defend the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and God, so help me, you know, all that stuff, right? I can't remember the oath, but took that oath, and he said it wasn't real. I didn't have to go. I could just yeah, back out, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't make a promise to God and quit. God created us. <laughs> We're in the theater. <laughs> And, like, there was just enough of us. It was all my friends, like, a whole band, right, taking me. <laughs> enough to fill up the entire row of the theater. At, like, one of the rows that you sit in. And, uh, and I was like, <laughs> what the hell, you know? <laughs> Thanks, guys. <clears throat> I said, I'll just sit up closer. I'll sit closer to the screen, man. I can enjoy it, right? Yeah, all in my face kind of thing. Big, looming image. And uh, the first part of the movie, the first scene, was a war scene. And it was insane. Like, and you'd, I'd seen plenty of that on other movies before. But this got me. This got me. And it means something. God has a right hand and a left hand, and he actually will use and work through both. He wants to use the right hand. You do the wrong thing, 
you've put a mark in your right hand and you've marred, scarred, defiled what it is that should come from your right hand. And it happens because you get a seal on your forehead on the things that you think causes you to do things that you wouldn't normally do, caused by <clears throat> fear of something other than God. When I was sitting there watching this war scene, and shit's just gone haywire, and then all of a sudden this mortar comes in and you know blows up in the screen and fills the entire screen with smoke like dust just dirt flying dirt <laughs> good title for this one huh i picked it before i decided to talk about it kind of weird but it blows up and then when the smoke clears you see this one guy and he's like just wandering around like you know like somebody sucker punched him and he couldn't think straight and he's just kind of wandering you know going here and there and you're watching him and he's like wow man this guy just took like such a serious hit he don't know what the hell he's doing you know what he did know exactly what the hell he was doing because what he does is all of a sudden he stops and he reaches down and he picks up his arm that it got blown off and he swings it and tucks it up under his good arm and walks off with it and that's exactly what God is gonna do God's gonna teach you through evil what you should know because you refuse to do good And I should like end this video right here, but I'm curious to see what they what they say here. Um, I love you guys. <laughs> On August 6, 1982, the English rock band Pink Floyd premiered the musical drama The Wall, based on the band's album. Bob Geldof from the Boomtown Rats <laughs> starred in the film and spoke only one line that was not a part of the album's song lyrics, Pink Floyd. The Wall saw a limited release in August of 1982, premiering in one theater. The, uh, premiering, guys, uh, I did see this, okay. Uh, the film debuted on the U.S. box office chart at number 28 and earned over 68000 in gross earnings. Directed by Alan Parker, known for the movie Mississippi Burning and Musicals Hall of Fame, The Commitments, and Evita. The screenplay was written by vocalist and bassist of the band Roger Waters, who during uh, who, during the In the Flesh tour 1977, began to feel alienated from the audience who he believed weren't listening to the band during the concerts. At one point, Waters was so frustrated that he spat on a fan, an act that would later he would later admit was quite fascist. The story explores abandonment and isolation. Yay, story of my life. Symbolized by the wall and allows Pink, a depressed rock star, <laughs> uh, based, uh, how about oppressed rock star? I'll go for that. Based on Waters and former band member Sid Barrett. Uh, the film follows Pink down a path to madness and physical and social isolation. Bob Geldof, singer of the Boomtown Rats, portrayed Pink, whose spoken lines are directly from the album's lyrics. Only one spoken line isn't in the lyric. Next time, fuckers. <laughs> oh... This is perfect, Lord. <laughs> Spoken after he throws a TV out a window and then cuts his hand. 
Waters was originally going to play Pink, but it was discovered he didn't have a knack for acting. Geldof was chosen for his charismatic presence, and he was a fan of Pink Floyd's music. This made him willing to work closely with the band and allow for guidance to ensure the film stayed to ensure the <laughs> to ensure the film stayed true. Well, that's a tongue twister to the album. Kevin McKeon and David Bingham played younger versions of Pink, and other cast members included Christine Hargraves, Eleanor David, Alex McAvoy, Bob Hoskins, Michael Ensign. Jams Lawrenson and Jenny Wright. <clears throat> the official premiere occurred on July 14, 1982, at Empire Lancashire in London. Waters and fellow Pink Floyd members David Gilmore and Nick Mason attended this event. Also in attendance were Geldof, Paul Yates, Pete Townsend, Sting, Roger Taylor, James Hunt, Lulu. Who the hell is Lulu? And Andy Summers. <laughs> the only Lulu I know is Lulu Pincus from Mad Max. But anyway. <laughs> Artist Gerald Scarface, who created much of the art for the Wall album and in the Flesh tour, was also present on premiere night. By September, the Wall would be screened in over 600 theaters, climbing to number three at the box office charts, behind E.T., The Extraterrestrial, and An Officer and a Gentleman. By the time the movie closed in early 1983, it had generated $22 million. When it closed in early 1983, it had generated... 22 million. 22 is an important number for me. And so is early 1983, as I just said. Very interesting. Welcome to, Stair Welcome to Stairway to Eleven, the classic rock and golden oldies news and opinion site from Fan Stairway is dedicated to... Uh, okay, so they're plugging their own shit. A stunning vision of self-destruction, one of the most hor horrifying musicals of all time, but the movie is effective. The music is strong and true, the images are like sledgehammers, and for once, and actually they did have sledgehammers, and for once, rock and roll, the, the rock and roll hero isn't just a spoiled narcissist, but a real suffering image, the suffering servant of all the despair of this nuclear age. This is a real good movie. Roger Ebert. Wow. And there you go. And of course, they've grabbed cookies. So if you guys want to buy me a tire for my motorcycle so I can go on tour, that'd be great. I can't afford it. <laughs> but actually, uh, yeah, that'd be wonderful. Just don't pick those sizes. Those uh, won't fit my bike because uh, my bike doesn't have a big butt. Anyway. Um, so why in the hell did we come on here in the first place? Now I gotta think. Um, let's see, dirt, farmers. Ah, <laughs> uh, I can't think now. Post it in the comments. Maybe I'll think of it in a couple seconds here. <clears throat> um, I think we're going to look up some lyrics to a song. So let's look for lyrics. Uh, I'm burning for you. Blue Oyster Cult. <clears throat> Uh, that was the first one. Who's your name? Who's your daddy? Is he big and rich like me? Uh, if you do me slow. Uh, time of the season. Maybe. 
I don't have time. Of. <clears throat> and like these lyrics and everything, the way I'm telling you that God's everywhere, <clears throat> it's in everything, man. It's everywhere. It, it's so everywhere that it'll just blow your mind, literally, and give you the creeps because you'll you'll just uh, you have to accept it. I mean, what is God in control of everything? Every lyric, every song, every movie, every everything. Uh, the, that answer is yes. And once you see it, you can't get away from it. <clears throat> it's the time of the season. When one loves high, in this time, give it to me easy, and let me try with pleasure and hands to take you in the sun, <laughs> to promised lands, to show you everyone. It's the time of the season for loving. What's your name? Who's your daddy? He rich. Is he rich like me? Has he taken any time to show you what it, to show you, <laughs> to show you what you need to live? Tell it to me slowly. Tell you what I really want to know. Ooh, really versus surely. That's another Genesis thing, man. Really and surely are not the same things. Really is real. Surely means eventually. <clears throat> it's the time of the season for loving. Uh, let's see. Yep. Yeah. You know what? And it is the time. <laughs> I'll just put it to you that way, guys. It is the time. <laughs> I'm tired of being a, uh, <clears throat> makeshift messiah, and I'm going to go back to gardening. My phone number's out there, my, uh, my teachings and perspectives and so on are out there. Um, and that's that. My birthday's coming up. And you know what? I can't think of a better time to abandon ship. <laughs> Let everybody figure it out on their own. <clears throat> I shouldn't. I shouldn't have to destroy uh, my meager little existence here in order to show people what is obvious and true and factual and can be proven and so on. So, like, yeah. Do I have an attitude? Uh, maybe a little bit. But wouldn't you? How long would you let your boss abuse you before you just said, flip off? Oh. The clock is striking 12. Can you hear it? Yep. 12 o'clock. Bad time to pause the game. <laughs> right at the hole. That's okay. But there's other weird warnings, see? Like, when Trump and Pence uh, showed up, that was Trump-Pence. Trumpets. Obama's nation was another one. Now you got Biden, and see what I'm trying to teach people is that God is working through both forces. And you want to know what's funny? Biden means 
both or abide with. And who's the who's his evil demon that's along with him? Harry's son. Harry, son, the son of Harry. The Harry son. Uh, yeah. Hey. If Cleck can pull his shit off, I can do a hell of a lot better. At least I can use it for a positive purpose. He, that guy's like Mr. Demon thing, you know, like. And and that's what people don't understand about the times of Noah. Times of Noah isn't about being oblivious. Well, it is, but it isn't. The times of Noah <clears throat> is about everybody having evil on their minds all the time. Well, guess what happens when you're judging people? Uh, you got evil on your mind the whole time. <laughs> and the more you judge, the more you'll fall. Because what, however you judge somebody else, it'll be judged unto you. Crazy, huh? I'll tell you, man. God is, uh, blows my mind. Blows my mind. People who know me from the days of your, they knew I was a druggie. Man, I don't need any drugs at this point. <laughs> I was just looking for a way to make money, you know, uh, live on the streets, you know, as a 14 year old and like, earn enough dough to put some food in my mouth and, and, you know, still make it through high school and whatever. You know, most people, they, they go through those kind of rough spots in life. They quit, man. You know, I'm gonna... This, this little trouble is so hard that, you know, I shouldn't continue on the path that I should be on, right? And for me, my path was about earning my, you know, it was about earning my high school diploma. That's what my purpose was. And learning not to bump the damn ball and when it's going around anyway. You know why I lost that ball? Because I judged. Just like that. <laughs> if I would have left that shit alone. <clears throat> 26! That's my birthday. That's when I'll reclaim my mini minuscule little bullshit life that I have. <clears throat> and abandon you folks to your own. Still got my phone number. I'll, I'll answer it. I'll, uh, I'll pick up and you know, we can chat and talk about and so on, but, you know, what I don't appreciate is how some person that believes in God and spiritual forces and so on, revelation, the Holy Spirit, and all this stuff that they can't put their finger on, won't believe that God might reach his hands in a time and grab some piece of shit like me and use me to help you out. What? It's exactly what Jesus did with all his disciples. They're all a bunch of losers by today's standards, right? Thieves, criminals, tax collectors, people stealing from their own. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Whores. I mean, yeah, figure it out, man. I think you're so damn awesome. We're going to find out otherwise, and real quick. You should be the blessing to the world that you're supposed to be. Abraham was a blessing because he had faith. He knew what the right thing, you know, the Holy Spirit, love, whatever you want to call it, guided him to do what was right. You know, I mean... It ain't many people that want to get into, like, an argument with God, right? Like to say, what if there's only five people? What if there's only two? What if there's only... <laughs> and God's like, are you kidding me? Idiot. <laughs> he didn't say that to Abraham. He, he loved Abraham. But, he, you know, he's like to say, dude, you're like... 
expecting me or thinking that I will do something wrong or unjust? Come on. I'm God. I couldn't be God if I did that. And I don't mean me being God, but God, right? No. Damn it. <laughs> Why did I do that? See? <laughs> oh. We just get led into this thing. Our own thoughts make us think that we need to mess with something. <laughs> like, so. <sighs> Damn. <laughs> That cost me. That cost me. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, you know, Abraham's like, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that, right? Would you? He's like, well, why are you asking? <laughs> of course I would. Have people don't understand why Lot's wife, you know, wound up, you know, as a pillar of salt. Well, the, the reason why was because she thought, you know, she'd look back upon them. Why would you look behind you? Why would you not just plow forward? You know, let the dead bury the dead. Don't worry about it. If you judge them, you've taken the place of God. You've taken God's spot. He said, you know, you're saying, I, I, you know, why in the hell would you look back from tragedy? You should just be like, yay, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, yes. I was just going to say it, but I didn't want to say it. It's a ball. Can I get it? I never runs out. Extra ball. Woo! <laughs> yeah, man. It's like... She looked back probably in judgment, right? And I don't know if I'm drawing this from, you know, them movies where, you know... But it really does seem like it's the wife that drives the damn process, man. If she wants that garage clean, that garage is going to be clean. If she wants whatever done, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Listening to the woman. The woman drives the process. Did you see that score? Sixty-eight. 
Wow, that was a pretty powerful line there. Dog breath, miserable stink vomit. <laughs> to go and a red light multi ball kicking. What would you do? Would you ride it out or would you just take the real thing? Oh. Come on, get out of there. Okay. 
shoot next city for a shortcut. One in the bank. Two in the bank. Alright, so let's see. Do I have four more cities to unlock? Let's just take it. Two more cities before I can even possibly get an extra ball. I didn't mean that, Lord. Don't damn anything, okay? Please. Denver, 303. Follow the white rabbit. 288, miles to Denver. Oh. Yeah, there it is. Alright, guys. I'm, uh, I'm done. Maybe I'll talk to you later. Maybe I won't. We don't know how God will decide everybody's time is when their time is. 
How about uh, Isaiah 46, 5, John 5, 2 to 7, and uh, Ezekiel? Ooh, I don't like when Ezekiel pops up. Ezekiel's usually bad, man. Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a club. And all the time. Ezekiel 8, 9. Catch you later. God willing.